Do you remember the story of the talkative tortoise and the two geese? These three became fast friends living in a pond, but soon drought hit the area and they had to relocate. The geese could fly, but what about the poor tortoise? The three friends had a long meeting and then the clever geese came up with a plan. They brought a piece of stick and asked the tortoise to hold fast onto the stick with his mouth. The geese would then hold either side of the stick and fly up into the air, lifting the tortoise. But they had a strict message for the tortoise. We know you love to talk, but here you will keep your mouth zipped. And away they flew with the talker clamped onto their stick. But the tortoise had to open his mouth. He had to give some instructions. And so you know how this ends. We can laugh at the silly tale, but you can recognize a pattern here. Do you also often find yourself being your own worst enemy? Sabotaging yourself for no good reason? Hi, I'm Sheila and this is Lumia 24. Light on! Call it getting in your own way, call it self-defeating behavior, call it whatever. If you have a goal and you make sure it doesn't happen, that's self-sabotage. There are a million ways we self-sabotage. We are on a diet and then that one trip to the fridge and we are back to binge eating. Need to finish your work project? Just after you finish watching this particular episode of Friends. Relationship ready to get to the next level? Right time to pick a fight about wet towels on the bed. Actions like these seem really small, but like a river eroding away rocks, over time, Self-sabotage creates a grand canyon of self-defeat from which it's hard to climb out. So why do we do it? Awareness is the first step to change. So here are the many reasons why instead of shooting for the moon, we end up aiming right for our foot. Think about what happens when you begin to even consider working on a new project or goal. As if operating on autopilot, Self-sabotage immediately goes to work. It wastes no time weaseling its way into your head, planting seeds of self-doubt, uncertainty and fear. And like a knee-jerk response, you immediately begin to focus on all that's bad, on the reasons why you can't rather than why you can. And not to forget the voice in your head which keeps telling you that you're not good enough, smart enough, unworthy of success, whatever. Like I read somewhere, it feels bad to fail, but not as bad as it feels to succeed. As stake gets higher, we feel that we have a longer distance to fall. We don't want to be blindsided by failure, so we try to take matters into our own hands. We don't know where this flight to success will land us, so we seize control thinking that at least then if you are going down in flames, it will be a controlled burn. Recognize this one? This is also called the imposter syndrome. Everyone goes through this one, especially as you take on more responsibility or do something that may put you in the limelight. You think that you will be called out as a fraud. So you quickly backtrack and start doing as little as possible. Feeling like a fake is a one-way ticket to the big P. Procrastination. Which is why Posting pictures of your cat on Instagram or researching that new keto diet that you have no intention of following or hey, let me just watch this episode of the Game of Thrones before I begin all stalling activities. The list of meaningless things we choose to do instead of work upon what's important is extensive and big. We love the familiar. If you're used to being abused, neglected, ignored, exploited, it's oddly comforting to put ourselves in that position again. How many times have we said, better the known devil than the unknown? Time and again, we choose consistency over happiness. And which is why we talk about wanting to do something, but never do. Once in a while, we self-sabotage simply to stir things up like small kids who are bored and want to push some buttons. For example, if things are going well in a relationship, we pick a fight, create some drama and get a rush. Sabotage recreates the familiar feeling of instability, 
confusion and chaos and we are right back to our reason number four our comfort zone so how do we stop sawing off the tree limb that we are sitting on well like i told you to change your fruits you have to change your roots and what is the root of self-sabotage the fear of failure I know, I know, but think about it. Fear of success isn't just a fear of making it big. It's a fear of trying one's best and not succeeding, of being publicly judged, of our best not being good enough. And that's why probably we hide under the self-sabotage umbrella, a special spin of nothing ventured, nothing to lose. Now, if you're ready to put self-sabotage behind you, to stare it in the eye and walk straight through it and advance towards your goals with conviction, Here's a sturdy little tool from my toolbox. I first discovered this in an article by Martha Beck. So I'm going to call this the Martha Spin. Begin by getting a pen, some paper and half an hour to sit still. Then make a detailed list of things you plan to do tomorrow. Everything small and big. Showering, making breakfast, feeding the goats, acquiring a corporation, holding up the bank, whatever, everything that is there on your agenda. Now, think about the bad habit you're trying to break. It can be procrastination, it can be overeating, smoking, or just good old-fashioned confusion. Feel the compulsiveness that accompanies it. Relax your breathing and read over your to-do list. And as you imagine performing each activity, notice how much you feel like engaging in your self-sabotaging behavior. Rate each item. Zero if it doesn't make you the least bit tempted to indulge your bad habit. Ten if it makes you jump right up and rush to the fridge, a bar, a slot machine or wherever you go to self-sabotage. This exercise can bring you face to face with some scary truths. Someone you call a friend might turn out to be mainly a binge buddy. Your job may make you want to smoke all sorts of things. Calling your mother may trigger your desire to run, so you pack your bags and travel aimlessly. Beneath this familiar urge, you'll find a sensation like weariness, sorrow or terror. Now here's step two, and this one's important. Look at each self-sabotage including item on your list and ask, in a perfect life, would I do this thing at all? If so, what would I change to make it more enjoyable? If not, what would I rather do? Let your imagination roam as you consider the last two questions. Think of alternative activities. These are not just concepts but images or pictures that make you perk up, relax or both. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself to what's logical, what's doable, what's possible. Dreaming it doesn't mean you have to do it. But guess what? If you never dream it, you'll never do it. This exercise requires honesty and focus. Remember, avoidance behaviors are at the root of most fears and anxieties. Without a long sustained focus, you place a death sentence on your goals and they'll eventually wind up on the endangered species list. Focus is the ultimate power move to scare the crap out of fear and to fast track your goals. If you're ever going to find your greatness, if you're ever going to make your mark on the world, you must decide that what you want is bigger and far more important than the resistance which prevents you from doing it. I want you to know that everyone deals with self-sabotage in their lives, but it can be beaten. Use the tool and let me know if you can find some traction. Write to me, comment in the box below or email. Reach out please if you need more help.